side of it, but let's just keep praising the Lord in this place. It's felt so good this morning. Aren't you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Woo! I know I am. Come on. Oh, I breathe because you give me breath and I walk because you are my steps and I sing low because you are the melody. Oh, yes, you are. And I am, could you say that I am? Could it be that you're the reason I live, the reason I love, the reason I always have enough? You're the reason I laugh, the reason I smile, the reason I'm standing all the while. You're the reason for everything that I do. to you if he's the reason why you praise this morning come on put your hands together everybody hey oh, oh you, are you are the meaning of it all you just speak and make the nations fall your dance and all creation moves in place you are faith you are hope you are life you, you are grace song you know sometimes we sing these songs over and over and over again not that one you probably didn't know that one but um, a lot of these worship songs we sing we sing I am a friend of God and we just sing it over and over and over again I remember my mom saying to me one time she's like I don't like those new worship songs they just say the same thing over and over and over again some of y'all feel that way I know but you know the angels never stop singing holy 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 is the Lord God Almighty there's something to that repetition Sometimes we have to sing it a hundred times before it really sinks in and we start to realize what we're singing. And for me, that song in the chorus, it says, you're the reason I laugh, you're the reason I smile, and you're the reason I'm standing all the while. I don't know about you, but some of you might have come into church this morning on your last leg, you know what I mean? You're struggling and to even stand up and praise him or raise your hand, it's a sacrifice of praise and you just don't feel it, you just don't have it. And we get that. 
Just because we stand up here with microphones and weird clothes, it doesn't mean that we don't feel that way sometimes. I know for me, my, my family has gone through an unbelievable 2024 so far. I don't know about you. You know, um, in the song, It Is Well With My Soul, when it says, Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, I got to keep going now. Let this blessed assurance that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for You, that's, that, that lyric says, though Satan should buffet. To buffet means to hit with fists. How many of you feel like you're being buffeted? Anybody? And we can be honest in church. Sometimes church is one of the most dishonest places in the world because, come on now. We come in Sunday morning after Sunday morning and we see each other and we have to put on a brave face. And how you doing, brother? Oh, I'm great. Praise God. And inside we are just dying. And I stand up here before you this morning as somebody who is broken. At the end of January, my brother-in-law, my wife's brother, took his own life very unexpectedly. And it has been like a tsunami has just blown through our home. I have a daughter who's 18. She's graduating from high school, and it has just devastated us. And I've definitely spent a lot of time looking up at heaven and going, seriously? And, you know, I grew up in church my whole life, and I remember pastors getting up and putting both hands on the platform and saying, God will never put more on you than you can bear, which is not in the Bible, by the way. But I've looked up at heaven the last few weeks and said, hello, <laughs> you're not paying attention because this is hard. And I know for a fact in an audience congregation this size, there are people who have come in here feeling like God has forgotten you feeling like he doesn't care, feeling like maybe if you were gone, it wouldn't matter. And I just wanna remind you today, if nobody else has told you this in a long time, he loves you and he doesn't just love you, he is crazy about you. And if you have breath left in your lungs, you have purpose. Do you hear me? For those of you who have been considering maybe not going on, maybe throwing in the towel, Please don't give up on God because he has not given up on you. I sat on the front porch of my uh, pastor's house a couple of weeks ago and, <laughs> and uh, we talked about this story about me being a, um, a counselor, going through a counselor when I was going through difficulties in my life in the past. and. The counselor, after I told him my entire life story, bless his heart, actually bless my heart, I was paying by the hour, but um, he looked at me, he goes, what do you want from me, Jody? And I said, man, I'll tell you what I don't want. As somebody who's grown up in the church his whole life, I just don't wanna hear Jeremiah 29, 11 again. You know what I mean? And I, I don't mean anything against the word of God. Please hear me. The word of God is the foundation that we stand on. And I, I, amen to that. But you know, Sometimes Christians just say things over and over and over again without any heart or spirit behind them. And after a while, I just need God to show up. You know, I'm just telling you, he is a God that shows up. He is a God who is there despite how you might feel. And please don't let your feelings betray you because that's all they are, are feelings. God is fact. He is who he is. And he is there even when you don't know it or feel it. Who knows what's around the corner? Who knows what's around the bed? Who knows that where it's gonna start? It's gonna end. And I guess 
that's part of walking down the road life can take. I guess that's part of leaning on someone else to lead the way.
This world brings trouble I, I find so hard to bear 